Hello YouTube and welcome to Groundforks. In uh, this episode of Kerbal Engineering, I will be showing you how to build a small VTOL plane. Uh, and we will be using uh, this small science plane from the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration series that was featured in the episode 22 as let's say a basis so we want the new VTOL to do to be able to do exactly what this one was capable of so here is the blueprint uh, for the VTOL uh, and it will be using the parts from the QuizTech Aero Pack so here I'm adding the cockpit which is the lightning cockpit and here is the VTOL lifter K fan section so this is one of the fans that will be providing vertical thrust. During this video I will also be showing you guys how to balance a VTOL um, aircraft, you, uh, and I, I mean asymmetric aircraft, using the RCS build aid, which I think you, a lot of you will find interesting. I found Scott Manley's video to build how to build a VTOL very helpful and very insightful, but uh, it is more um, aimed towards building a symmetric VTOL. And here today I'll be hoping to show you how to build an asymmetric one. So um, you can see at the front uh, we had a K fan lifter, then we have a cargo bay, and then we have a fuel tank followed by a VTOL engine. Um, now, uh, thinking in retrospect, uh, I don't think that that single VTOL engine will be capable of providing enough thrust to uh, lift these planes, let's say politely, behind um, off the runway. So I'm thinking I would rather have two turbojets for the forward propulsion at the back with the addition of two um, VTOL engines at the back, so in total of four engines. So I'm just now trying to browse through the parts to see how I could pull that off. Um, yeah, so here is the bicoupler and here I will put the regular turbojet engines because um, the purpose of this uh, engineering will be to build a VTOL craft that will be visiting yet another anomaly in the interplanetary voyage of exploration, the one on the North Pole. And here now I'm looking for some suitable intakes, hopefully. Well, these ones don't look too bad. Mm, let's see if we can integrate them nicely into our design. Yeah, well, might as well just work. Not the most prettiest girl in the ball, but she will turn a head or two. Uh, let's see, now I'm looking for uh, one component which I always find incredibly hard to find, and that is the liquid fuel tank. Just a regular common fuel tank. As you can see clearly I have too many parts, so that's why I'm struggling with finding the f that uh, fuel tank. So while I'm kind of browsing and trying to find it, oh, here it is, um, yeah, so these two fuel tanks that I'm adding on the sides at their end will be featuring the MK1 Razor VTOL jet engine and this is what I wanted to show you. So uh, one K fan at the front and the two VTOL engines at the back. By the way I must a big shout to the guy who designed QuizTech Aero uh, this is really a beautiful mod and it was something that I was looking for a long long time so kudos for making that just keep it up please um, okay now I'm thinking of attaching some fuel lines but I really didn't like them being so ugly on the top so I figured I will put them on the bottom side when where they are less visible okay um, yeah so and here I'm adding I was thinking adding some um, <laughs> um, some uh, fuel lines to provide the the fuel for the K fan, but I don't think that was necessary. So yeah. Um, and now I'm filling the cargo bay with the science experiments because, like I said, I really wanted this plane to have the same capabilities as our old turbo plane 
but as you saw maybe in the interplanetary voyage of exploration episode 22 i think or 23 when we visited the tomb of uh, the tatanjab uh, it was limited when landing because it still required it had some parachutes which helped in terms of uh, you know drag chutes which kind of uh, sped up the whole landing process but it didn't have the capability or the flexibility of a VTOL. So I th- I find this aircraft a natural progression in terms of uh, my plane program towards space planes and eventually SSTOs. So uh, I'm just now putting some lights, some life support, you know, printing it up a little bit and also adding experiments. Because that's kind of, I mean, to me, if the plane doesn't have a purpose, well, it's not worth building. Maybe just for the design purpose, but yeah, I don't know. To me, a plane really has to have a purpose. So, I'm just now cramming as many experiments as I can muster. Oops. Um, yeah, can I detach this or not? Well, no matter, I can live with the magnetometer boom being slightly crooked. That's fine. Um, what else can we put in? Uh, Orbital telescope, but then again, it's only to be used from the orbit, so I don't plan this being an SSTO, so I don't need to care. Uh, Anomalous signal sensor, well, that's kind of the whole purpose of this plane, so yes, please. Um, Some mystery goose, I think I probably gathered the science from the poles, but then again, This is not only for the poles, although it is its main mission. So, I'm thinking maybe putting some um, laser scanner and x-ray scanner, but I don't really see a convenient place where these guys could fit. So, yeah, maybe I won't have all of the science experiments just per se. Let's see, uh, 35 days of uh, worth of life support, which is more than enough. I don't expect the flight to take that long, or otherwise I would be in serious trouble. Okay, I decided to extend these just for beauty reasons, because uh, otherwise I would need to put some really short wings at the back, which I didn't like. So, yeah, it does uh, a little bit increase our mass, and I do want to keep our mass low, because after all, guys, this is a VTOL. So that means that uh, these engines are not super powerful. I believe that uh, front fan section has total thrust of 80, and the rear ones have the 65, so it's not the world's most powerful engine, but um, should hopefully be enough for this plane, so... I'm just now... I really like the design usually of the Delta Wing, so I always use them in my designs. Although they seem a little bit too thick for my taste, so I'll probably reduce their thickness. Um, Let's see, just positioning them carefully and adding some procedural control surfaces. By the way, these wings are built by the mod Procedural Dynamics. It still hasn't updated to the version 1.0, but uh, then again, this plane is built in 0.90, as is the rest of my interplanetary voyage of exploration series. Um, Yes, so now I'm adjusting a little bit root thickness and tip thickness. Uh, while I'm trying just to figure out so it looks good. I'm designing this VTOL as I would design any plane first. You know, like wings, uh, fuselage, and then I'll inspect the center of mass and center of lift so that it actually can fly like a plane. And only then I will be proceeding to balancing it out for the VTOL operations. Because if it doesn't fly as a plane, well, I don't need it really. (laughs) So, yes. Uh, So, that should give us enough uh, pitch and uh, roll authority. I want to add also some winglets or wing tips. And those should hopefully provide some vertical stability. They're not intended to be steerable. They're more or less just here for the um, stability reasons. So I'm using the rotating tool, 
with our gadget I'm making them vertical um, since I'm playing with far I am hoping that this actually do play a role and here I was using winglets uh, or yeah, I was using stabilizers and guys this is a mistake you should use winglets because the stabilizers turn completely uh, you don't want them for your authority otherwise uh, your plane will be unstable I found that in the later tests so in the end of my craft I did replace these guys with the actual the, with the other one which I think is the winglet and that one only has the rear section of uh, the winglet um, movable but yeah so horizontal surfaces we want to provide pitch and uh, roll authority while the vertical ones we want only your authority um, then I have added an adjustable landing gear which I must be really careful to put on the nose and not on the vertical K-fan section which comes immediately afterwards and then the two rear wheels which come slightly after the plane's center of mass so that this is to ensure that the plane can take off like any other plane if you put them too far back um, then you won't be able to take off to a good yeah I'll adding some little bit struts for a little bit of rigidity and yeah, now it looks like a plane. So I think it's time to put in the uh, groups. So and here I think I goofed up a little bit. Uh, I did reassign the groups. I typically put custom five to be uh, normally I put custom five to be cargo bay. So I decided to scrap it and go from the beginning. So custom one turbojet engine, custom two would be the um, VTOL engines, uh, custom 3 would be the, I guess, the K-Fan, so turbojet, oh. custom, yeah, um, custom 1 turbojet, custom 2 Razor VTOL engines, so the rear ones, custom 3 should be the K-Fan, so the vertical fan, and then custom 4 would be um, also the rear engines but toggling their VTOL mode so I want to be able to turn them on and off and also turn their VTOL mode so adding a little bit of air brakes because guys if you really want to go to the VTOL mode you want to have a lot of air brakes so that you can actually stop mid-air before you proceed to the landing so yeah and uh, those I typically mount uh, three pairs I mount on custom 9 and one on custom 10 so I have a little bit more flexibility whether I want you know easy soft braking or hard braking um, yeah um, so this pretty much sums it up oh I almost forgot I really want the um, RCS uh, jet thrusters because those provide additional control inputs especially important when you're doing the VTOL mode so I typically put some fo forward front and back and um, yeah if you need to stabilize your plane during the VTOL operations those guys prove to be invaluable because they're sort of like RCS thrusters together with SAS which ke keep your plane uh, pretty much stable so here I'm starting to using RCS build aid and I don't want to use translation because those are affected by RCS thrusters but I want to see how do my main engines affect the role of the craft so now I'm putting them in the first stage so all VTOL engines I will be putting in the first stage and I will be putting all of them in the VTOL mode because I want to see uh, how will my uh, plane behave when they start thrusting so now I'm just rearranging my groups okay so now all three are in VTOL mode and as you can see my plane would basically flip so what you want to do is thrust limit your engines until you get the moment zero but then again if you look the thrust to weight 
uh, on uh, the RCS build aid, it's 0.95, which is the problem, meaning my plane will not take off the ground. It has to be one or higher. So uh, these are two things that you want to really balance out. And I was now trying to play with the fuel. Uh, but ultimately I have decided to slap on one more set of RCS thrusters and since this craft is very light, I don't really need to care that much in terms of, uh, in terms of, uh, potential, uh, of it potentially flipping. Um, yeah, so now I'm just kind of playing w a little bit with, um, uh, this center of thrust, center of mass, but I think my vertical... My vertical um, uh, thrust weight is below 1, so I don't think the plane would be taking off, but I wanted to test anyway. So, okay, now I set the brakes on, and I'm setting the engines to the VTOL mode, and this K fan is really beautiful animation. Setting RCS and SAS, and setting the thrust as much as I can as and you can see a little bit thrust weight is 0 0.85 the problem was that I thrust limited my rear engines a bit too much so now I'm just trying once again and still my thrust weight 0 0.85 and my rear engines are too weak I deliberately have included pictures of me failing because I wanted you guys to see this. So, uh, I decided I really wanted to increase the thrust weight and I'm seeing now of 0 0.97, well, it's not really gonna cut it, but we can give it a try anyway, see what happens. So the main thing with RCS build aid, you want to say select your engines and you want to have all of your VTOL engines in the first stage. So here you now you can see me enabling all VTOL engines, RCS and SAS. RCS is important because it activates the small RCS thrusters. And I forgot to actually, I was thinking that I did something wrong, but I forgot to actually enable the rear engines, which was kind of silly. Uh, yeah, I was here thinking that uh, my forward engine was too was too strong, and then I realized, oh, yeah, I forgot, duh, to disable my rear engines. So yeah, now I decided to put everything cranked to max, and let's see what happens now. Now I'm carefully raising, but my zero thrust weight is 0 0.97 and still my forward part is lifting. No, that wouldn't work. But then I remembered that my rear engines are thrust limited. So I reverted to editor and um, I decided, okay, hold on a second. Let me just remove the oxidizer, which puts our thrust away to 0 1.01 .01, and that should hopefully help us, uh, you know, get up quicker. And I've added these two thrusters for additional thrust to help get these planes, well, behind of the runway. So with the removing of the oxidizer, which we won't use surely, uh, we have hopefully increased this um, plane's um, thrust to vertical thrust to weight. So now I have enabled all of the engines and I am raising the throttle, brakes are on and let's see what happens now. It's 1.01 .01, so theoretically we should be able to take off the ground at least. Let's see. And yes, and you see now how these RCS engines are useful because they keep your craft in check. And now I'm enabling the turbojets, taking the gear up, and as I pass somewhere around 70 meter mark, I, um, I put the rear engines to the horizontal mode and I disable the uh, K-fan. So, and here you can see the craft that was 
perfectly capable of taking off vertically. Uh, now I'm just trying to turn it around and also do a, v uh, uh, a vertical landing because now it's just VTO, it's not a VTOL. And here I notice the problem with the usage of my... Um, a little bit problem with the usage of my vertical stabilizers instead of winglets, but still it isn't so much pronounced. So now I realize I need to disable my horizontal engines and I've put all of my vertical engines in the VTOL mode. And then I realize, oh, holy crap, I actually did not disable the, the horizontal engines. So I shut them off and uh, now I was trying to bleed off some energy and he, th this is usually the trickiest section of the vertical landing. You have to monitor your vertical speed and uh, regulate it using your thrust and also you can check uh, which thrust weight you're maintaining but horizontal speed also gives you a boost up because of the lift of the wing so you have to be really careful in terms of how you approach it. Uh, you want also maximum air brakes and pitch your nose slightly up until your surface speed comes to almost a full stop. And as you can see, I have landed more or less vertically. I'm going to treat that as a success. Well, I've done better, but I'll treat it as a success anyway. So now what remains is to test that this plane can actually fly like a plane which means taking off horizontally and landing horizontally. Uh, and also I wanted to add some lights because we were testing at night and this was really dark. Um, so yeah, I decided to add some lights on the, um, on the tail fins and two I will add below. So. Okay, so now putting the putting the lights beneath. Okay, and um, as you can see, now I'm just checking toggling the horizontal and vertical, and you can see how my uh, roll RCS build aid reports changes, and my thrust weight is still 1.01. .01. And I wanted to, I was thinking if I could pl should play a little bit with the liquid fuel and oxidizer to increase its thrust to weight, but uh, vertically you don't need to care. If it's 1.0, one, 1 your plane will take off. It just must not be lower than 1. Um, okay, so few more things to add. Um, I think I need to add an ejection module because this is a highly experimental craft. I'm not still um, confident in its abilities. So I will later add the Vanguard ejection module and I'm just, just now checking uh, if um, how my plane would behave if it was only horizontally thrusting. And I decided to do another simulation. So. Oops, I think I might have pressed the wrong button. Sorry. Okay, coming back to the plane. Um, yeah, I was looking for, I think, the ejection module. And I want to slap one at the bottom of the cockpit. So that my kerbals, if something goes wrong, can eject. And that puts our thrust to weight maybe below one. I have to be really careful to see. Yeah, it, it puts it exactly one. Okay, so we are still a go. Okay. Um, cool. So I guess we uh, we really need to double confirm this and to re-simulate the vessel. So I'm just now putting the rear engines to the horizontal mode and putting everything in a single stage because I want to test it as like uh, not to have dual stages. Dual stages I use only for testing the VTOL functionality. Now I want to test pretty much everything. So um, yeah, 
let's see how it goes. Okay, lights, they certainly look nicer. So I'm putting RCS, enabling engines, putting them in uh, VTOL mode and increasing, cranking the throttle all the way to the maximum and let's see if the craft will take off. I'm kind of hoping it will and yes it does. So as you see thrust weight 1.0 equal and we still can go. So now starting my horizontal engines going up to some 70 and then raising my rear and closing my K fan and continuing the regular horizontal flight as any other aircraft. So this I hope um, this kind of shows you in terms of how you can build an asymmetric more or less asymmetric plane by asymmetric I mean front to back not side to side because side to side this is completely symmetric um, okay so now let us see if this plane can land horizontally like any other regular common your everyday plane and here you can see that my plane suffers from the lack of your stability and this is mainly due to these uh, vertical stabilizers or to this stabilizers as opposed to winglets. Uh, those both of them are pack of are part of B9 package, I think. So, yeah, you might want to be careful which ones you use. And here you can see my plane like a little bit flip happy. I'm just struggling to keep it under control, but no, it didn't work. Good thing that this is a simulation, right? So, and my Kerbals sadly didn't even have time to eject. So, um, right now I was thinking, okay, center of mass, center of lift, well, that's still good. That doesn't change much. So that's not the problem. So let us simulate the vessel again. And this time I will be more careful, careful piloting it. I don't think during this video that I actually replaced... Uh, this tail fins, but after I'm afterwards, I'm pretty sure I replaced them and I got a bit more stability. So, yeah, testing the horizontal takeoff. Given the fact that it has good enough thrust weight, it takes off without a problem. And then we want to test also the horizontal landing because that one we still haven't seen. So. Yeah, here you can see the wings, the, the tails um, causing a little bit of instability. So now I was thinking of pulling an Immelman, basically just going straight up and flip the plane and land it. So, yeah. Flipping, that went fine. Flipping, that went fine. And now trying to get back on the course to the runway, well, that's a little bit more of the problem because I haven't still addressed the stability of the plane, but then again, I'm not trying to use your authority as much, so I think this attempt looks much more promising when it comes to landing. So let's try the horizontal landing. I expect it to be fine. And yes. So as you can see, it can land perfectly well, no risk of uh, destroying the engines on landing. So the only thing that remains to be addressed is the vertical stability. So I decided to actually build a vessel and then I remembered, hmm, actually, yeah, I forgot about that vertical stability. So yeah, this is post commentary, so... I think I will probably I think I'll probably scrap the design. And its design will be finished in 7 days, but uh, yeah. I don't know if I have scrapped the design honestly during this video or not. I'm not sure. I don't think so. I but I scrapped it off camera just for your information, guys. Anyway, um, yeah. So that.
pretty much sums it for this episode of Kerbal Engineering. I hope you learned something, like if you like the video, and hit subscribe for more KSP content.